I'll call the September 20th Board of Selectmen meeting to order. Um, I don't believe there are any changes to the agenda tonight, so we'll accept that by unanimous consent and move ahead with announcements. We can add something to pending contracts. Thank you, Madam Chairman. This meeting oh, is being video and audio recorded. Uh, we have an announcement that's going to be ongoing for a while here about the Nantucket Harbor Shimo and Plus Sewer Extension project. Work is beginning at the intersection of Vesper Lane and Surfside Road, although it had to be delayed last night and tonight, and maybe we'll resume tomorrow. So David's going to give us a bit of an update on that and also talk about the next phase, which will start hopefully, if all goes well, next week at McLean Lane and Tashima. Good evening, everybody. Uh, just a report on, we did work Monday night. Um, we were able to get the initial uh, section across the parking lot at the pool and install the first manhole for the project. Um, and we did a bunch of other camera work uh, also Monday night to locate laterals and everything else along the whole road that we did that all day and then most of the night. Uh, we have laid out most of the manholes already on Vesper Lane and Tashma and McLean Lane. They were all surveyed over the last couple days. And the second crew is supposed to show up on the island the 25th, which is Monday. Weather permitting, we'll see how it goes, but that'll be a daytime crew. That won't be any night work. We did have to delay last night and tonight night work, so we're going to end up working probably Thursday and Friday night to make up. But we should hopefully be out of that intersection by then. So it's, it went very well the other night. I just wanted to add, too, because we've had a couple calls in the office that the night work is for this intersection only, and that for the remainder of the project, it is all during the day. Yes. Yeah. Just until we get past that, uh, that whole intersection. So, But it went well. And that's, um... Thank you very much, David. Next, the Children's Beach boat ramp is going to be closed from October 31st through January 15th for repairs. We have done a lot of outreach on this, including notifying boat owners and anybody who might be using the boat ramp and the, the project's been in the works for quite some time. There is an environmental window within this work can only, within which this work can only be done. And it, it does unfortunately coincide with commercial scallop season. So um, people ought to be looking at what their options are. There are options in Madiket. And we'll certainly do our best to, you know, help facilitate things, but the, the ramp does need to be closed for this work. So we'll continue to make announcements about that to get the word out. And I think that was it for announcements. Okay. Um, this is the portion where um, if anyone wants to make a public comment about an item that's not uh, otherwise on our agenda, they can come up and do so. Seeing none, um, I don't believe there's any new business, so we'll move on to approval of minutes, warrants, and pending contracts. Uh, we have minutes from September 13th. Any changes? No, move approval. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Approval of payroll warrants and treasury warrants. Move to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Um, we have some pending contracts. Madam Chairman, I don't have any particular uh, um, items to point out regarding the pending contracts, except for there is is one which is not which is a uh, lease amendment with Sherburn Commons, and this was added to the agenda late because of some timing issues. It is shown here, and I have some late breaking news that. Um, I think maybe David Worth or Kevin Comick from Sherburn Commons might alert us to. And uh, David's going to give us a little bit of a summary about this amendment. It's been reviewed by our council, their council, back and forth quite a bit over the last few months. Um, I think the board is aware of what the uh, amendments are, but um, there, there was a typo in something, which makes it less alarming. So maybe do you want to? Um, David Worth, um, Chairman of the Board of um, Trustees for Sherburn Commons. Um, our request to uh, amend this lease um, actually goes back to when we first put uh, this um, not-for-profit organization together 
uh, back in September of 2014. Um, the way we financed it was through uh, the, the current owner at the time, a real estate investment trust, who took on, um, who had carried the note and we entered into an agreement uh, which expires at the end of this year. Uh, we have a uh, $5 million obligation to them uh, that needs to be satisfied in full on the, by the 31st of December. Um, when we put the business plan together, uh, the only feasible way that we saw to be able to pay down that debt was to uh, sell through the process of creating a condominium some of the cottages so that we could raise the capital to uh, extinguish the debt. Uh, we've gone back and forth about how many to sell, and as the fortunes of Sherman Commons have improved, our cash flow has improved, uh, we've actually cut down on the number of units that we are intending to sell and have, at the same time, negotiated with two banks uh, financing arrangements to uh, put permanent financing into place in addition to the proceeds on the sale of up to four units. So uh, we're going to extinguish the debt. We will take on a smaller amount of financing from a commercial lender. And uh, uh, based upon how we've been operating uh, in 2017 and the latter part of 2016, uh, we're in good financial shape. In order to do that, we need a few changes to the, um, to the ground lease, which uh, the selectmen are authorized to, to sign and, and to negotiate. Uh, some basic housekeeping, you need to consent to the fact that we're going to create a condominium. Town meeting voted back in 20, 2009, I believe, to allow for condominium form of ownership at Sherburne Commons, subject to approval on change in the lease by the selectmen. And so that's been uh, memorialized uh, through a town meeting vote. And we've gone through the process of creating a condominium and, and all of the various uh, legal uh, activities that are associated with that. As we came um, up to that earlier this summer, uh, we, um, our council and the town's council pointed out some changes uh, that uh, they thought were important to include in the ground lease, and that's what we're here uh, asking that you uh, sign off on and approve. Let me say, just uh, to reference what Libby said, the 50 units is a typo. We do not have an ask for any new units at Sherburne Commons. We have always been, and the, your ground lease with the prior owners has always allowed for 15 additional apartment units. And that's come down through the leases over the years, and it would still remain in this lease. So 50 is, is a typo. Our attorney missed it. The town missed it. Um, and I'm here to say that I'd be more than happy to We didn't miss through. it. Pardon me? We didn't miss it. They said your attorney missed it. Thank you. Uh, um, so we're not asking for any additional units as part of this. We're, we basically would like um, uh, to change uh, the age to make it all 55 and above. Uh, in the prior lease, it was split between 55 and 62. Uh, there were some occupancy changes that we wanted to make. We were previously restricted to no more than two people in the cottages, and uh, we would like to assure that, in fact, that we can have more than two people in the cottages. We're more than happy to keep two people in apartments uh, requirement. And um, so those are, I think, the two, um, two most salient uh, issues. Um, the other was a, somewhat of a housekeeping which was to change, not to change the l length of the lease term remaining, but to restructure it so it conformed to Massachusetts law. And as I say, um, town's attorneys, our attorneys have worked this out and gone back and forth. So uh, I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Uh, but, um, you know, we, we are at the point where we need to, uh, we need to get this refinancing done. Um, so that uh, we don't um, run up against our deadline and, and then we have a much more uh, serious issue that we have to deal with. I did have a comment. Um, <clears throat> your ability to get permanent financing really speaks to the financial operating improvements that you've made and I think that's uh, a benefit for the whole community. Uh, <clears throat> yes, it does, and um, you know we are we are dealing with local banks, so uh, 
it speaks to their confidence and what's what's there as well. Any other questions? No. Just clarifying that then in the um, the other information when it says construction of additional units that refers to the 15 units that are already approved. Correct, and okay. and I. I have the original language from the prior leases here with me, but uh, so that would not change. Uh, we would just strike the 15, put 50, and put 15 in in its place. David, are you at full occupancy now? I'm sorry. Are you currently at full occupancy, or uh, if we have one unit available, maybe? But we've been running at 100 percent. So you probably need to build those 15. Oh, we will not do it until we have a confirmed list of potentials um, mm -hmm. we will learn from prior errors but yes I mean I the seemingly the demand uh, is there and coming and it's certainly been a subject that we've talked about in our board meetings we don't have any active plans at this point but um, it, it is on our radar screen I think it's a positive that the options there are 50 yeah. Yeah. was made me a little right. nervous no, <laughs> I, I don't blame you and we certainly wouldn't uh, be out uh, trying to to do something in a um, you know, under under the radar on something like that. So, so um, if you want to take this out separately, I'd, I'd be happy to make a motion that we approve the Second Amendment to the amended and restated ground lease. I think. We'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Um, does anyone have questions on the other? They they look pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. I think you have condominium documents, which the lawyers have worked through. So uh, I think they've, judging how many times we went back and forth, they protected your interests uh, quite, quite well. Great, so. thank you. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Just uh, David, I don't, I don't, um, I don't have final copies. You don't have what? Final things for them to sign tonight. No. All right. We'll see what we have. If not, yeah, I can talk to you about it after. Okay. I don't have anything. Any on other the rest questions of them. on the contract? So make, Does someone yeah. want to make a motion? Make, make a motion to approve them as presented. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. <laughs> okay. Mobility LLC. Um, they are not going to be here tonight. Did anyone have questions, comments? There were some general departmental comments on this. Mm -hmm. uh, we would recommend approval, but uh, there may be the need in the future to remove the poll that uh, is in question. So we'll, we'll, we would want to make our approval just acknowledge that. Mm -hmm. I'll make a motion we approve based on those comments. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And opposed? Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Um, now we have a presentation from um, um, some Park and Rec members and some um, interested citizens in regard to Tom Nevers Park and um, its future. Good evening. Uh, I'm Dual McIntyre and I've uh, been a longtime resident of Tom Nevers for many years, more than I'd like to tell you tonight. Um, but uh, we're here to give you a presentation on some proposals for the park at Tom Nevers. Uh, we have no formal organization, but we've received help and guidance from the Park and Recreation Commission. We've contacted many residents uh, in the Tom Nevers neighborhood. We've held two meetings with the public at large and have conducted an informal survey to record what people are interested in in the park. We receive strong support from these sources because most everyone believes the area can be turned into a beautiful park dedicated to family use and passive recreation. Tonight, we seek your guidance on how best to proceed. We would like to meet with you in a working session when your schedule permits to investigate in more detail some of the issues, including funding of such improvements. We have some ideas on how to minimize the cost to the town, but time doesn't really permit us to delve into it tonight. I'd like to turn this over to Cheryl Emery, the Chair of the Park and Recreation Commission, who will outline how this idea got started, and she will be followed by Elizabeth O'Rourke, who, with the help of a summer intern, Maya Kodalak 
and her staff at Jardins International develop the presentation you will see shortly. Cheryl? Thank you, Thank you Duel. My name is Cheryl Emery. Oh, excuse me. Happy birthday, Libby. <laughs> Thank you, Cheryl. <laughs> As chair of the Nantucket Park and Recreation Commission, I have become aware of the many issues that surround our parks, especially Tom Nevers. We have this amazing 21-acre site overlooking the Atlantic Ocean that could be the premier park and pride of our year-round and summer community. I understand that our town officials are overwhelmed with daily tasks that keep Nantucket moving budgets, affordable housing, clean water, new sewers, but it is important to have vibrant parks in our community. Healthy parks are a marker of a healthy community. <laughs> parks are a place we can disconnect from our devices and connect with each other and recreate. I reached out to Elizabeth O'Rourke, who is a landscape architect. Her company, Hardin International, has contributed pro bono to conduct a full site analysis and a conceptual plan for Tom Nevers Field. With this community effort, we have conducted two outreach forums. We had an informational booth at the Nantucket Island Fair. I strongly feel together, the community, we can contribute to the health, vitality, and stewardship of our parks. We would like to further this discussion with the town in working group sessions to move this project forward. Thank you. Elizabeth. Uh, good evening. I'm, I'm very excited to be here and to share with you some of the work that we've done since May. Um, I think it's good stuff. <laughs> um, so as, as Cheryl said, um, Tom Nevis Field is an iconic park on the island. 21 acres by the sea, and it's ours. It has amazing vantage points, plenty of open space, understated beach access, and a beautiful, gentle quality. It is surrounded by a lot of conservation land, um, conservation foundation land to the north, and Nantucket <coughs> Housing Authority to the, to the northeast. We have a neighbor, the Lewises, to the to the southeast and uh, land bank to the southwest. There's also um, well-established roadways to the north and Tom Nevers Road that ends at, on the eastern side of it. Uh, there's well-established recreation on the site. Um, it's heavily used on weekends. There's good softball leagues, baseball. Um, people are using the playground and the open turf. Uh, the vehicular aspect is not well organized and cars are penetrating everywhere on the site and that kind of lends to a little bit of disorganization and it also brings the car right in the middle of the park, which is not what we want to foster in thinking about passive open recreation. Uh, this Massachusetts shoreline change project shows what's happening um, to the land uh, on, on the ocean side. So we're losing about two feet a year, a little bit more um, on this area, which is more like two and a half feet a year. But you see the erosion, the, the coastal, the, the shoreline is the black line at, um, at the base, and that's an even line. But when you look at the top of the coastal bank, the blue line, the current one, you see that there's a bifurcation in this area. We projected to 50 years on the pink line and to 100 years with the red line. So we can see that there's road runoff and it's creating um, an erosion problem that's man-made, that's not created by a bigger power. A safety barrier indicates this problem. If you look further, you see that the roadway is crumbling. This is a remnant of, um, I believe, what was accessing the VFW. You can see the concrete, brick, this PVC pipe, wire sticking out. It's dangerous. It's uh, destabilizing the bank, it's littering, it's creating pollution. And big chunks of asphalt and concrete falling really um, destabilizes the bank. And it's um, impeding, you know, the ability of, uh, sorry, the ability, well, sorry, of beach grass, you know, to get sort of reestablished and 
uh, perhaps give the, the bank some stability. Structures impede the ability of uh, runoff water to percolate naturally and evenly across the site. So having structures in a coastal bank is not something that's usually permitted, and here you can see why. These are the major hardscape structures on site, which we may want to think about removing if we want to take care of this beautiful property. Abandoned concrete pads, which no longer serve a purpose, and haphazard place um, parking lots in the middle of the property. There's also vandalized, um, there were some structures on the site that are somewhat abandoned. There's the vandalized former gate house. There's no door, no windows. Graffitis are taking place. We have a worn out uh, roller rink. The, this was built prior to the ice rink being built in town. So it was, it was for those people who really wanted to see a hockey league. Um, we now have that opportunity. So this is serving another purpose, but it's an incidental purpose. There's rusty storage structure. I'm told they don't really have storage in them, but they do store rust, <laughs> quite a bit of it. The public bathroom, um, I suppose, is somewhat convenient, but it's a little foreboding. And vandalism takes place there, I've been told. Needles have been found, bottles, and it's a little scary for parents to take their little ones into this place. It's also located smack in the center of this beautiful open land. So we may think about relocating it. There's the JFK bunker, which he never, um, never went into, fortunately. Um, but it does lend itself a little bit of mystery to the site. Uh, but that, too, is a neglected aspect of the park. Um, and I'm told the front door is just about falling off its hinges, and it's creating concern for vandalism in the interior. The children's playground is used, but it's rusty and little hands can easily cut themselves playing there. When we, when we did the presentation with the outreach, uh, we presented the site analysis that, um, that we had, and so those were the highlights that came out, what people you know, liked about the park or wanted to preserve, which is beach access, the open field, softball, vehicular access and parking, bathroom, a playground, and the baseball field. Some of the new components they might like to entertain would be the removal of impermeable structures, the planting of indigenous species, budget for security and maintenance, remove leftover infrastructure, reroute the road, and perhaps have an alternative playground. So with this in mind, we created just a, a loose concept, taking what people had told us um, they might want to see happen here. So this would be... Um, rerouting the entrance on the, the northeast corner of the lot. And this is where everybody was parked this weekend for the county fair anyways. Maybe having a facility here for uh, composting, recycling, that sort of thing. Um, the bike path would come in. That's scheduled to go in in 2027. This would be an area to park um, the bicycles and have bike racks. And it would be linked to walking paths that would be done with a compacted aggregate that would facilitate people that have uh, physical challenges, maybe wheelchairs, strollers, that sort of thing. But when the erosion takes place, this is the 50-year the line, what we would be sending down would be dirt and not asphalt and concrete, and that sort of thing. This would be open field for play, passive recreation, maybe a barbecue grilling area. Um, the, the sports field would remain if we were to remove the skating rink. Perhaps it could become a secondary parking for 80, all um, with ADA accessibility. And perhaps a bathroom could be relocated as far away from the erosion as possible so you get the most for your money. And um, maybe, a, maybe a pergola for shade accents, difficult to grow trees in this area, and um, a place for a children's playground. This is a more um, technical drawing of this schematic plan. Um, but we think it responds well to everything that we've heard and could, could, be, served, could, could be used as a starting point in the creation of a thorough master plan. Um, you know, we had some, some phases that we outlined at the beginning of the project. The first one I think we've, we've covered well, which was generate some interest, do full site analysis, historical research, public outreach, community involvement and then moving into a design and cost analysis phase. Um, 
So we would like your support to, again, maybe engage in a work session so we can see how we can move forward with this project. Um, I've consulted with Paul Santos of Tilton and Associate. And if you were interested in remedying the bank um, in a quicker manner because of you know, the problem is happening today, um, we would need to file a notice of intent with the Conservation Commission as well as with MISAs. Uh, this, that's a state, um, a state agency uh, because the work that would take place in the bank is under a Protected Species Act. And we estimate that cost would be about $14,000 to, uh, to get those permits mm -hmm. in place. So then you could obtain real estimates to get the work done, but you would have permits in place to move forward with securing the bank and sort of stop the bleeding. So that kind of concludes uh, what I wanted to present to you tonight, if you have any questions. How many people were, when you did the public outreach, roughly how many people were showing up? I think at the first one we had about 70. Um, the second one, we, a, a little less, maybe around 30. And were there any answers that surprised you or anything that people wanted or didn't want that was surprising? Well, the walking path wasn't an obvious thing, um, but I guess there's not a lot of peace places where people can go and walk away from cars mm -hmm. and feel steady on their feet if they have a physical disability. So I thought that was a really nice component and definitely embraced sort of the whole concept of what could happen here. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it surprised me that people thought this was just great the way that it is <laughs> and didn't want to touch it. I mean, just, just a mm -hmm. couple people, but it, yeah. it did surprise me to hear that, that maybe didn't per perceive that there was an issue here at all. Mm -hmm. What, what were the total participants in the survey? Um, about 25. <clears throat> okay. Madam Chair, I, I was at the, the first meeting uh, up here in the training room. And, well, first off, thanks for putting all this work in for every, everybody that's, that's, that's done this. Even though only 25 people did the survey, that's pretty good um, assessment of what I heard that night of the 70 people. I think everybody wanted passive-ish rec recreation. They didn't want a lot of change. And I think that the schematic or the, um, mm -hmm. the drawing that you did, yeah. is, is, isn't, it's, it isn't a huge change. I think it'll be accepted by everybody in Tom Nevers, right? But it, yeah. it takes care of that 50, 100 years of erosion. Mm -hmm. So that or some version of that, I, I think is a really good idea. It, uh, full disclosure, I live in Tom Nevers and I use that park. <laughs> I also, I also live in Tom Nevers. <laughs> uh, Curtis, did you want to get up and make a public comment? Thank you, Madam Chairman. I know it's Curtis Barnes. Um, I know this is not a public hearing, but um, I do a lot of fishing out there. And two things strike me. Uh, one, getting around the playground to the fishing grounds is horrible. They're, they're, the road is, is like an obstacle course, and I'm assuming that'll be addressed. But I don't see any place to park my car because fishermen go to the bank and walk down, and I'm just wondering if there is a plan to incorporate some beach parking for those of us who do fish and crawl down that bank these days. I wouldn't want to have to park and walk 100 yards to go fishing. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, um, un unfortunately, I think on this plan, the proposal is to make you walk a little bit. <laughs> this, this is just a schematic. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit more tonight about um, the concerns more than the final solutions. Um, and I mean, I do, we, we do have some money appropriated currently to replace that playground. There was some internal discussion of possibly reappropriating that money for a master plan, um, which is something we could consider. I think we pr should do something um, sooner than later about mm. the, the asphalt and infrastructure that's doing more damage to the bank. Uh, it seems like we could probably accomplish, find, maybe find funding for that. Well, it's a matter of priorities, and the DPW has a lot of number I one know. priorities right now, and this is in the 
queue. It's not in the queue for tomorrow. But um, I don't know if the director would want to talk to that. But we understand there are CONCOM approvals that are needed. Um, but, you know, everything takes time and, and people to do it. Yeah, Rob, I know you have a lot of no, projects. No, that's fine. <laughs> uh, so uh, on this specific location, uh, we've put out sandbags to try to uh, divert water uh, from further mm -hmm. causing uh, erosion out there. Um, Matica is going to be first. And then we'll come out and address this one next. Uh, they've sort of been waiting and suffered some additional loss today. So um, that's, that's the first one, and we'll get out here next. Uh, and I'm sorry, back to um, the discussion you started there about uh, reallocating funds that were um, appropriated at the last annual town meeting. I think um, that makes a lot of sense to me that we go back and uh, the, the first thought was $100,000 for a playground may be appropriate. There's no real design for that. Um, but this site really does need a master plan. Uh, fixing just the playground on this piece, mm -hmm. I think, is, is really not the appropriate way to go. Uh, I did attend the same session upstairs. Uh, I'm super excited that uh, Tom Nevers has, uh, as, as many people initially interested in in this whole effort as uh, has shown up so I'm, I'm very encouraged that i think as the town moves in this direction for improvement specific to this park among all the other parks that need uh some up updating uh we have a really good solid base uh to start from so i uh, applaud everyone's efforts here so far thank you yeah i agree this is a uh, you know uh amazing grassroots effort um and um you're to be applauded for that uh, <clears throat> and also agree that the master plan makes sense uh initially so and i hope you folks would stay involved and maybe lead that effort jesse you're welcome to come up hi jesse dutra 76 on mcpond road um I'm uh, in favor of this. I think it's a great idea, great for the community, and uh, fully support it. Um, I believe that there is the grassroots effort is is can be stronger than uh, what you're seeing now, and that we could, uh, as a community, appropriate help appropriate the funds needed to get the ball rolling. Um, I don't know what the CPC deadline is for the. Uh, <clears throat> playground but I'm sure it's not that money's not there forever um, and uh, so to me it, it it I think it's a priority and uh, any way that us as a community can help to make this a priority um, I think um, you, you've got some people here that are willing to help um, from um, Billy Coletti who did just say say it at the meeting that he would bring his tractors out there to, uh, you know, private donors. I, I think there's ways that we can uh, um, uh, get some more help. What have Elizabeth has done is been amazing. Um, frankly, I think it's close enough to a master plan for us to move forward to get more design work going, um, and uh, you know, make this more of a priority uh, by hopefully uh, let, allowing the community to help. Thank you. Hi, I'm Randy Ringer. I'm the president of the Tom Never Civic Association, of which we have 450, roughly, uh, members. Um, one of the things that, uh, we've also done that ties into this nicely is we'll be talking in the special town meeting about our desire to move the development of the Tom Never's bike path up uh, to uh, have that happen more quickly than is currently scheduled. So that ties in very nicely with the work that's being done here. Having a bike path go to a pleasurable destination certainly makes a lot of good sense. So the bike path is happening on one end, the park is happening at the other end, and I think really what we need to do is because there are a number of things that we haven't talked about tonight simply because there's, there's no time for it, not least of which is ideas on funding, um, 
is that we would like to just be able to work with you in a smaller environment where we could kick around our ideas, present to you what it is that we think is possible, and see if it does make sense. We fully understand budgets are limited. We fully understand prioritizations. But we'd like to let you understand what it is that we're trying to achieve and hear what it is that you can feed back to us in terms of what hurdles you see so that we can see if we can overcome them. That's really, that's really the ask tonight, is just to get a, what I would call a working session with, uh, with the Board of Selectmen. Thank you. I'm, I think um, it's beautifully presented and a lot of work has gone into it. And I think that a project that does evolve out of the community need for it and pushing it forward, I think, um, are always ones to really take note of. I think the only concerns, if they're even really concerns, would be that although I think this is a great starting point, I think that more public outreach, um, a broader cross-section demographic, I think that there are features at Tom Nevers that... Um, there's a lot of people that use them ramshackle or not that would be very surprised if they disappeared. And I think something along the lines of what Curtis was saying, I think there's probably more people out there that can further um, inform sort of the next level of, of design. But I think it's really well done. And I hope it's something that we can continue to support and not let this collect dust because it's, again, it's a very valuable master plan, start of a master plan. And I, I, I do want to add uh, to the gentleman who likes to go fishing um, that the land bank property um, is, you know, right next to it. And there is a parking there very, very close to the water and it's very informal. But what's nice about that, it's not inviting 200 people to go park right there. It's more discreet. I think to, to, in, to the context that we're doing a park and we're trying to, um, to do the responsible thing, environmentally speaking, it might be nice to foster here um, something where the, where the vehicle activity is kept a little further away from, from the coastal bank. And, um, and then the other thing is the permitting process. Like I understand about putting sandbags and running from Madikip to here, but to have permits in line mm -hmm. to, to be able to actually go in the bank because you need, you need those permits to go in there and play. So that's. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk more about, yeah. about that. Um, I mean, j just a couple of quick comments. I, I think a, a lot of what you've laid out is really good. I have talked to some people about this, and I've already heard major outcry about the removal of that rink, that suggestion. And also, I've heard numerous complaints just through other sites about moving beach parking farther from the beach and people who are older or handicapped have an extreme amount of trouble getting to and from the beach um, because the parking's too far away, which kind of speaks to what Curtis was saying about moving it so far back. But um, I mean, I would love to see um, if we could pack a room like this and get some input from everybody. It would be, would be great um, just on this subject and maybe reach more people with a survey to make sure that we don't do a plan that that leaves out things that pe that um that people might want um and then of course we would have to talk about phasing and funding and those next steps but i mean i think it is a really important resource and i'm really glad that um that everyone's sort of pushed to have it brought to the forefront Madam Chair, do we need a, a vote on anything for direction just to go forward look like the per, for the permits for next year? Or? I think we need to just talk a little bit about how to best approach it. Um, but I, I've heard what, what's, been, what's been said. I mean, we'll need to talk about how to set up a group and talk about who's going to do the permitting and the cost and so forth. But um, yes? Hi, Tracy Patton, and one of the, I, I'm out there all the time. I'm a dog walker, and one of the things that I do just notice that's not there that I see that is used by the bus company. I don't know if the police use it at all, but there is a, a driveway there that they train bus drivers on some parking 
Um, it, I don't know if that's still a consideration. I have no interest one way or the other, but I just don't see that, and that may be something that the town needs to address. Yeah. I that is has has an additional use out there. Yeah, there there definitely need, it's like what what Rita said. There are some elements out there that people do use that they will be surprised if they disappear to be something else very attractive, but we need to make sure we do it right. Do you have a comment, Jesse? Um, I was just wondering if it's possible uh, at this meeting to get a work group together to um, with some of the selectmen to start ironing this out. We need, we're going to need to, I'll, I'll bring that back, but we're going to need to talk about what the makeup of that group would be and, and how to set it up. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Is that is that okay with everybody? I just want. I mean, I'd be okay with starting the permitting process, or at least evaluating what needs to be done. But uh, along with what Jason said, but I always I always just double check if we need to vote on anything for direction okay. for. Well, I think we know that the bank needs some work, okay. and it has got to be worked in with other projects that are already ongoing. So it is not going to be done tomorrow. It's not going to be done in a month. It's going to be done as soon as we can get, finish existing things that are ongoing and get to it. And we, DPW and Director and I have spoken about this a couple of times. And as soon as we can get clear of the things we're working on now, we can, we can get to it. But things take time, things take people and resources to get at. So essentially, it's already planned to be done. That, yes. that portion of I would, it. I would say yes. We're, we're talking about mm -hmm. taking it a step. And then, then the next question is, what's the next step? I right, think it would be so helpful for the board planning. to know when that is on the docket, mm -hmm. and maybe the town manager can bring that back as, as one of her town manager report. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So, no, I really appreciate it. It's a really good start, and we'll just talk about sort of um, next steps and bring it back up. Yes? Sorry, just one more, one more thing. Just to keep the ball rolling here, could we set up for a, the next meeting to discuss a work group? Could we get some kind of tangible thing here? I think the t tangible thing you got is we've asked the town manager to come back and let us know when those things are the, um, you know, those things are on the docket. I'm not sure what else there is to. Well, I'm just talking about creating a work group. I think um, we'll the chair, chairperson. We'll talk. Kind of we'll talk that. about it. Yeah. About what what that would look like, and it will be back on. We'll have it back on an agenda within the month. Okay, within a month. Thank you. Is that fair? Okay. Yes. Thank you. I've just got got to look at the other priorities on the agendas. We've got a special town meeting that's um, sucking up a lot of energy. <clears throat> but I really thank you, everyone, for coming on the subject and. Um, we will continue it. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now we're mo moving on to public hearings. Um, we have a number of utility petitions. Um, we do not have representation here for these tonight. But I'll open the public hearing on number one, which is a petition. Oh, actually, we may have representation here. This is for the Yacht Club. Peter, did you want to say anything? Or? Is Jim here? No, I don't sure think anybody was going to be able to come tonight. Have okay, thank you. Madam Chairman, this is a project that results from the Yacht Club's dormitories. It's been discussed with town officials. We tried to work out a number of different options, and this is what we've landed on, which does entail cutting into a road that has been recently resurfaced. However, the repair will be done in such a way that is to the satisfaction of the DPW to um, have a very minimal impact. So I think we're recommending approval. Okay, it's a public hearing. Are there any public comments on this petition? Hearing none, I'll close the public hearing. What's the pleasure of the board? Uh, move approval. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. 
Um, next, we have a petition for Gray Avenue. This is a public hearing. Are there any public comments? Hearing none, I'll close the public hearing. What's the pleasure of the board? Uh, move approval for the, uh, for the uh, to approve the petition. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Third public hearing is for Bartlett Road. Um, are there any public comments? Hearing none, I will close the public hearing. What's the pleasure of the board? Move to approve the petition. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. And I'm just assuming that we're following the recommendations because each of these has something slightly yes. different. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Exactly. Um, number four is from Milk Street Extension. This is a public hearing. Are there any public comments? Hearing none, we'll close the public hearing. Move to approve the petition. And second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Number five, um, this is for Baxter Road and Rosalie Lane. This is actually the removal of a poll. This is a public hearing. Are there any public comments? Hearing none, I'll close the public hearing. Move to approve the petition. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Now number six. Um, this one I think we will have some, a couple of comments on. This is um, to expand the resident parking permit district in the Sunset Hill area. Madam Chairman, just to let you know how this came up, uh, this is a, a petition put forward by some residents of Sunset Hill. Our traffic and parking rules and regulations allow the selectmen to amend the parking district map on its own initiative or after having been presented with a petition that includes 51% of the owners of the property located on the street or streets seeking to be added or deleted from a parking district. So they are seeking to be added into the residential parking district. And I'm sure we have people who want to speak in favor. Um, this is a pu public hearing, so I will. Curtis Barnes again, uh, 12 Sunset Hill. I sort of uh, ran up and down the road and got signatures and stuff on this. I did send some pictures via email to the office, but I don't know if they got there. If they're helpful, I would like to share them with you. You know what, I didn't get a chance to send them out. May I pass them so you can? Sure. Essentially, what we're running into is people park on Sunset Hill and go to work downtown. <clears throat> it's the closest non-regulated area to downtown offices these days. And the second part of the problem is we have uh, workers who park their trucks there on weekends and go away. Um, if you're familiar with Sunset Hill, it's a very small road and it is, um, with the traffic that goes to the oldest house, uh, very heavily traveled both by uh, uh, guests and uh, buses in the summer. So we have a number of us who live there have noticed the constant parking in the daytime and um, Westchester Street is, uh, has restricted parking to, up to where it meets Sunset Hill Lane and then beyond Sunset Hill to North Liberty, Westchester Street does not have restricted parking. But our feeling is that with the, uh, the number of cars that are tending to park there, and I would say it's seven or eight a day that are there before eight o'clock in the morning, and they're gone at 5.30 or six o'clock, that this is uh, abusing the situation. It's also creating a traffic hazard, and uh, so we're asking if you extend the uh, restricted parking area to Sunset Hill Lane. Okay. Any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Any questions? Curtis? Is the main concern the actual traffic safety and or is it actual parking issues well there are a number of questions thank you for asking that i have been going to traffic safety meetings uh, with mike burns and that group um, for other reasons uh, uh, north liberty street is a raceway and north liberty and westchester street stop is not an operative word but um, it is a lot of traffic that does come up there because of the oldest house. 
and uh, as has been said in a number of places, uh, when you get all the parkers there, you're limited to a one-lane road. Uh, as you go down from the oldest house, the road narrows to about 10 feet wide. And that's where they park uh, to stay out of our way where, the, where we live. But what happens is you, you really have to run up on the dirt to, um, to get by some of the cars that are parking there. So uh, I, I think you have a lot of uh, bikes. You have a lot of kids who come up to the oldest house. So I would call it a public safety question. I also call it a traffic question. Oh, oh, I was going to ask one question. Oh, Curtis, can I ask you something? Yeah, we, got, we got some questions, Curtis. Where, where do most of the people park that go to the oldest house? I honestly have not been there in a long time. We Did they park along that road? Uh, they park on the right side of the road at the top of the hill, and that's short term. I mean, they come in and out. There but are uh, visitors. Are there short term spaces, though? No, there's at all? no, no okay. there's control. No, there's whatsoever. no control there. The okay. people who work at the oldest house have a driveway that used to be the loop road and and they can park and many of the the uh, the docents who go there pull up and and park there if we have a two-hour restricted zone that's consistent with the area wouldn't be any problem you can go park go to the oldest house but at this point finding a parking space is tough mm -hmm. and um, we've got a lot of yellow lines coming up Sunset Hill maybe too many yellow lines where we could create a few more parking spaces and there's a very real concern about Marsha Tooker, who has a Westchester Street address, but her door is five feet from Sunset Hill. And uh, if this is approved, I think we would request a handicapped parking space for her. She's 94 years old, and oh, but that's a different. <laughs> <laughs> That's a different You're agenda. You're not supposed to give out ages. <laughs> it's, in the public, it's in the directory. It's come on. And, and it's been said that you, you have an elderly person who can't walk up the hill. Anyway. Uh, the, the reason I ask that question is I just wonder in thinking about this if we should consider a couple of spaces in front of the oldest house that are shorter than the two hour. I don't want to beat it to death. I think if we create the principle that you can't park there and go to work and use up six or eight spaces during the day, that's, that's the underlying problem. However, with those two-hour parking permits, anyone who lives in town could go stick their car there and park there yeah, indefinitely. But they can also park there on, Ch on uh, uh, you know, any other place. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm which, just... You know, just you know, there's always they can unintended park on Center consequences. Street right by the JC because that's a two-hour zone. It's a lot closer to where they go. I'm not just sure where they. One go. of the complaints we, that I heard this a couple times this summer is that when people are renting their cars for a week or two weeks, mm -hmm. they renting do, their houses. They're renting their renting their house for a week or two. Yep. They'll move their car to a two-hour and leave it, and they'll they'll ask their uh, caretakers, "Can you move my car? The renters mm -hmm. don't want a car in the driveway." So that's what's happening. People are storing their cars on the street, on the two-hour spots in the streets downtown for a week or two weeks while they're renting their houses. Yeah. Which, yeah, so we have which a, our rules allow them to do, but we don't have the... I understand. We don't have, an, we don't have sufficient parking to allow that, those types of issues to continue, in my opinion. Because if we do, where do we put anybody? So it's kind of, I think, I think Don has a good suggestion. I mean, the half, maybe the six or four half-hour spots and the or rest even or two an, or whatever. an hour. You might want to spend an hour I'll at the museum. I'll take anything we can get. Yeah. 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 Um, are there other public comments? It looks like there are. So oh, come, just, come, oh, oh okay. sorry, Jim. Oh, did you have a question? I did, I did but that, well, oh, I'll wait So I just wondered, one of the reasons uh, we have these uh, restricted uh, districts is for people who uh, don't have driveways to park their cars. Right. What about people on Sunset Hill? Does everybody, are there people that don't have off-street parking? Well, I have off-street parking, and uh, I, I do rent one of my cottages, and okay. I make sure that there is a space for my renters okay. uh, adjacent. Do you know of any other uh, neighbors? Other neighbors uh, pretty much have off-street okay. parking, okay. except uh, Ms. Tucker. Okay. The, the person that I'm not supposed to talk about. Okay. Thank you. Come on up. Yeah. Hi, Tracy Patton for Sunset Hill Lane. Um, Sunset Hill is a very narrow 
one way up. We got a lot of people that will walk down the hill in the street. Um, that's fine. We get a lot of bicyclists that come the wrong way and mopeds, occasionally a car. And um, what we have is people coming around Westchester very rapidly onto North Liberty and then coming up Sunset. It's very blind. Um, there's a lot of no parking areas down at that end, so fire trucks, ambulance, buses can make that corner. Um, we get a lot of landscapers parked there. It's, it is part and part the parking issue, and it's very much the safety issue. N uh, at the top of Sunset Hill, it very much narrows, and if you get one car that parks on the right side, we just had a new, um, um, uh, thank you, guardrail, and it's one of those wooden ones. It's really tall, really wide, and where they've put it, people can't get out of the car on the passenger side, so they tend to park out in the road more, and so that's narrowed it even more. Um, so there's safety issues with that as well, and you might want to look at, you know, where yellow lines. I agree with you on the few spaces that even need less time. Um, we all love our neighbor, Marsha. We all know Marsha very well, despite her age. We love her. <laughs> and, you know, we're more than happy to, to share a space for Marsha, handicapped or otherwise. Um, we all pitch in. We're a very nice, tight-knit community for the most part. We may have one that we're not so happy with. Um, there's always one, but they live on another street. We won't digress into that. Um, and um, it's nice to come home and be able to park. Most of us have like a one car parking space. Um, myself and Bob, we have two cars, so we can't without parking into the sidewalk or potentially out into the street park. I'm a dog walker, pet sitter. I come and go all day long and I can't get parking on my own street. Um, that's a real frustration, and yet other people, we get a lot of summer residents down on Westchester who are renters, they are uh, working here, there's like eight people, kids living in a home there, and they park on Sunset because they don't have parking. So it's, it's you know, we kind of feel that it's a, a give and take, but we're now taking a lot more grievance mm -hmm. and not getting, you know, what we pay for in our taxes here. Um, we would like to be able to park on our own street. Thank you. Thank you. Who's next? Oh, okay. I'm Marcia Gardner Tooker, and I live at 35 Westchester Street. My father built the house in 1928. Uh, our back door is on Sunset Hill. We have parked on Sunset Hill for 89 years. Uh, if you amend this parking thing, I understand that I will not be able to park there because it's for residents only. And my, phys my physical address is 35 West Chester. It would be a great hardship for me. I have to be a mountain goat to climb up from West Chester Street to get to my house. So it would be an incredible hardship for me if you amend this. Um, and unless you give me a special dispensation, like getting from the Pope a, a, a handicapped parking uh, thing to park by my back door, I'm, I would certainly um, go for the parking district, but I would need to park by my back door. I'm 89 years old, and I can't climb up that hill. Thank you. All my neighbors, just, uh, Curtis has off-street parking. We're all friends together. Bob parks in his drive when he, when he can. Tracy parks by our back door. Uh, we're all friends together, and Geraldine has off-street parking, but she and Tommy have three cars. Just so, one question uh, before you sit down. Do, do, you have a handicap do you have a handicap placard? On your car? I'm deaf. I can't hear. Do you have a handicap placard? No. I, well, yes, I have a handicap. We call it a cripple sticker, but they say uh, uh, it's politically correct to call it a handicap parking sticker. <laughs> I have a cripple sticker. So it would be a solution if there was a handicapped space available to you in the nearby. It would help you if they put a handicapped space in. So could you give me special dispensation to pack by my back door? 
well, it's a little bit different than yeah. this hearing, but we'll, we'll talk you. about that. <laughs> um, Madam Chairwoman, I just wanted to point out that these properties here, 37, 27 through 37, all have Westchester Street addresses. And if you did put Sunset Hill Lane in the parking district, none of these properties would have allowances to park there on Sunset Hill Lane because they technically are not in the district. They may back up to it, but that is not where their frontage is. And because they're not in the district, they can't get a two-hour sticker. Correct. And we usually do not put accessible spaces in for one specific person. It would be open to anyone who has a right. handicap placard, so just keep that in mind right. as well. Yeah, we've been through that recently. Good evening. John Riccio from 33 Westchester. My neighbor right here with me and not as old as Curtis said. Um, we have an awful lot of issues with parking and traffic on Westchester from the corner of Sunset on <coughs> Westchester, up North Liberty to Sunset again and on Sunset. Our, our thoughts on this isolating of Sunset Hill is just not logical if you don't take into account the rest of the neighborhood from Sunset on Westchester all the way up to North Liberty and including the four spaces that exist on North Liberty. So we would like you to look at the total package, the total neighborhood, not just one isolated street. <coughs> we think it's much more logical to do that. As a second point, if you do grant Sunset Hill this provision, they're going to force people off of Sunset Hill and they're going to come to Westchester and park on Westchester because it's an easier place to park. So you're going to exacerbate an existing problem. Westchester during the summer now is already virtually a one-way street. Mm -hmm. Everybody has to pull off and let everybody else pass. So it's almost impossible to get through that. So we're just saying if you do approve of Sunset Hill, we ask that you approve Westchester from Sunset Hill all the way around the corner and up onto the hill itself. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, did you have a question? I just, well, uh, for uh, Erica, does the traffic safety committee, do they opine on these kinds of? Um, traffic safety did review this. Mm -hmm. um, there was something in the packet, I don't know if it made it into your packet, but they did um, they did vote on this. Um, I, don't, I must have missed it. And I can't remember exactly remember. what they... Uh, okay, that would be helpful to know. So, I don't know. Anybody else see it in the packet? I'm, I'm looking again yeah. right I now. I don't remember it. seeing the... Did you want to speak? Yes, I'm Russell Smith, uh, 29 Westchester. Uh, I will uh, almost uh, parrot what John had to say. Um, my feeling is that um, we have people park, uh, let's say, workers park in the front of our house, some Westchester. And what we really rely on is to have a few open spaces because in July and August, in essence, Westchester is a one-way street. Uh, and so if it is packed, which it is most of the time, um, with people that, uh, the workers that are going to vacate Sunset Hill and come down into Westchester, uh, there's really no open space for uh, yielding to the uh, traffic coming, I'll, I'll say, um, south um, from anywhere from Wesco Lane all the way up to, to North Liberty. Um, I, I read the ordinance and it said that the uh, police department uh, issues the restricted parking mm -hmm. and the chief is in the back and he's lived on Westchester in the past and I think he can speak to the fact that um, it is um, it's almost uh, an untenable situation in the in the summertime uh, with um, the oncoming of the uh, opposing traffic it's almost like running the gauntlet and so consequently I, I have to almost agree with John that um, I'm not advocating that uh, you make Westchester a no parking, I mean a uh, restricted parking area or permitted parking area, but I think that changing Sunset Hill will have a, si a significant impact and uh, not to um, not to contradict uh, what was said in the past, but Sunset Hill is a quaint little lane compared to Westchester in the summertime. 
and I walk up there all the time. Uh, we have the tour buses. Uh, we have most people that go to Sunset Hill don't even know where, uh, go to the oldest house, don't even know where it is. Uh, and so consequently, they walk up there. So I don't think there's heavy traffic on Sunset Hill, maybe for the residents, but in, re in relationship to the Westchester, it's a, it's a little lane. Westchester is a thoroughfare. Thank you. Are there any other po Good evening. I'm Geraldine Mullen, number six, Sunset Hill. Uh, resident 24 years with a right-of-way deeded to and from my house over someone else's driveway. So I'm required to park in the street and I do find difficulty many times in the summer of securing parking with the landscaping and other situ <coughs> situations. Excuse me. So I'm in favor of changing some zoning to uh, provide parking for uh, a situation <coughs> needing that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Just to point out, at um, 25 Westchester is where the current two-hour restricted parking stops. So um, I... It's actually right there. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so that's the bottom of Sunset Hill does uh, merge into that. The, can you go back to the other one, Erica? So the it, lot number 19 in pink does not have any parking in front of it because Wesco Place has to be able to pull out and there's a fire hydrant there. And so somewhere around 27 uh, parking does begin. Um, in the summertime, 27 to 29 will have parking in front of it from, thir uh, from 29 heading left. Um, in increasing in number to 31, 33, and 35, there is actually a lot of parking there. And um, very often um, we'll have to call the police because somebody does park there, a van, for a month, and we don't even notice it's been there for a month until someone says, hey, have you seen that white van parked there for the last month? So there is a lot of parking on Westchester. I agree that Westchester... Westchester, Sunset, North Liberty, uh, I hate to say it, but um, these streets have turned into raceways. I think you'll find that in a lot of places, Gardner, um, just all the different streets. People are driving way too fast. I don't know what we can do about that, but I do know that as of 29 Westchester just said, Sunset Hill is a lovely, quiet, quaint street. We've got a lot of traffic, a lot of people, a historical house. Um, a lot of the buses, even the buses, cannot sometimes get past, get down there. Um, it's a difficult street, and um, we really still strongly feel that it serves a community. It serves Marsha, despite the fact that um, that would allow someone um, to utilize that handicapped parking space. Um, I've yet to see anyone other than Marsha up there with a the handicapped parking space. One of the things that I really notice is um, as a pet sitter dog walker here, most of the people drive everywhere and they want to get there. They drive up to the oldest house, they look at it for two minutes, and they drive away. Uh, you do get a lot of people that walk up from town, um, but the majority of people here are using our streets like a raceway. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other public comments? Um. So I, I think I'd like to get that report um, before I'm willing to. Before we close the public hearing, if we left it open, could we make any yeah. amendments to this proposal? Or would we have to re-notice it anyway? Like if you wanted to add Westchester Street add into it, I think you'd have to re-advertise that for three weeks. I mean, I'd, I'd let. So I'd be in um, favor of deferring this until we can take a look at the uh, 
Traffic Safety Committee's report because yeah. apparently they, you know, I, just just for some input. So. Well, yeah, frankly, I'd like to look at that, have someone look into adding more properties and all of the properties that make sense, making a certain number of spaces shorter term that would service the historic property up on the hill and probably adding a handicap space that could either be used for a resident or for people visiting the oldest house. Um, but... Th those are just my initial thoughts yeah. on it. Yeah, I'll, I'll comment. I, I walk, uh, I have been, the last year, so I've walked two or three days a week. I've gone around down by the jetties and up along here, so I've seen everything that everyone is discussing. And I've seen, you know, the sidewalks that you can't walk on. This is, Westchester is uh, a safer and better way to get up to something natural than Cliff Road is now mm -hmm. because it's, it's, it's a mess over there. So when I leave, from, you know, when I go from town even at night, I'll come up Westchester and go through the park to go home because it's a nicer walk and it's a little safer. The cliff is is worse. Uh, but with with that said, I I think there are a lot of issues here. I I'm not sure that the report from traffic safety is really going to address them. Uh, you know, I keep pushing for a uh, transportation and parking commission of some type to deal with these issues. I think we we end up with it piecemeal. We end up with something, and we look at it, and we make a decision. Then we, you know, we find out that there were two or three unintended consequences. So we make another decision. But I think this whole, if we're going to sort of tackle this, there has to be a way to look at this holistically, and the neighborhoods have to get some priority in some of these. And I, we don't ha we don't know how to do that yet. We haven't figured that out. And so, you know, so I so I think I you know I like Don's suggestion of looking at Westchester and this all as one, but I still think we have to push for doing a little more examination, being a little more proactive on some of these issues. Um, yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd like to, in the, this instance, I'm not against this proposal. I recognize the problem. I see it in a couple other locations, um, but I want to do it correctly. And um, so I would like to move it along and come up with another proposal, but I think we, Need, I think we do need to wait to alter this proposal is just my my take so alter it you think potentially to include Westchester I think potentially to if we're going to do it to include more properties and to have a different mix uh, rather than all two hour spaces up there if, if we were to this may be for Erica if we were to uh, add a no parking sign on Sunset Hill where it gets really skinny is that, a, would, that would that be separate that would be, we would take that to traffic safety if we were to, or could this all be one just, big we giant? You could do it comprehensively. You could just do it. Okay. The, yeah. With, if the board says we want you okay. want to, we would just do that. All right. Then I, I agree with waiting. I, I think it's good that it's timing. I agree that there's something will get changed here, and that'll that'll be good for the neighborhood. We have time. It's September. It's not May, where it's getting ready to get busy again. Yeah, I, you know, I'd just be more comfortable if there, rather than each one of us saying, well, let's put a space here and no, let's put one over here. And I think, you know, my mother-in-law goes over here and um, I, I, I need to rely on some staff experts or people from town to tell us mm -hmm. a rec mm -hmm. the recommendations. So I'd even, even bring it before, rather than bring it back and say, we're going to add a couple of Westchester or whatever, I'd, I'd really rather send it to somebody to evaluate it look at it not from a neighbor not from each of the neighbors but more really from the whole town's perspective is that would, would we don't have anyone current that would be the parking commission in theory that we don't have and do no, we have anyone we that we can the public safety we committee do we have a traffic safety, safety, safety worker safety could you do, do that for us chief <laughs> i'll probably regret this but um i I wouldn't recommend going back to traffic safety because that's the equivalent of sending it to you guys and talking about it again because it's the same setup. It's just everybody sitting around kind of the same ideas exactly what you're doing. Maybe um, send it to town administration, ask Mike Burns and the police department to come up with a recommendation on how to address this. We got a lot of time because it wouldn't take effect till next uh, June anyway. Um, just. As a comment, um, I would rather discourage the multiple different time mm. slots because it's too difficult it makes it different. A good example is where the 30 minutes are up at 
um, by that uh, um, yarn shop flock, flock. Um, th we get constant complaints that they're not enforced very regularly it's because it's in a two-hour zone and the officer that's assigned there times his patrols like it's a two-hour zone if we do a 30-minute zone it's a much smaller patrol they do so those are the I kind of things we got to yeah. talk about and we can send you back a recommendation I, th I think that I think sounds great um, yeah. I but, would but, but if traffic safety did Discuss it. I'd like to know what they. I thought they did. I was just trying to look through the minutes. Uh, no, but I mean, uh, I have a it's... recollection that we basically said we have no real position. It's up to the residents to either send it forward okay. Okay. or the board right. of selectmen okay. to take it up, okay. and that was pretty yeah, much I what think... it was. Okay. Well, that's helpful. Thank you. Yeah. But that, I think your suggestion makes that sense. That would be great, and I, I would like you to still consider looking at a few one-hour spaces, not ha not splitting it way down to half hour. And my my worry is that people from other parts of town that rent their houses might go put their cars up there okay. for a week. And I would note too that. Um, I guarantee that you're going to have Brant Point people coming in. Mm -hmm. it, this is going to snowball into other neighborhoods. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, there are other neighborhoods where it's, but I mean, I, I, mean, I don't disagree that this is a problem. And it's um, all over town. Mm -hmm. and, and the question is, where are those folks who may be town employees, or where are they going to park? Well, so. I think we're backing ourselves into a corner eventually, because the next will be Easton or Milk Street or whomever. And I think... Parking is becoming a real quality of life issue for everyone. There's the tra there's the safety side, but there's quality of life. And so I would agree with Matt that although I definitely want to see things done and I want to see things done for the people in the neighborhoods, I do feel like without some bigger plan, piecemealing it, we're we're gonna we're exacerbating our issues and much more quickly. May I step in? Um, One I'll last speak for comment. the people on the Westchester. Nobody really needs a uh, permitted parking ticket, I mean uh, sticker. We all have off-street parking or garages, uh, so it, they wouldn't be used. And my reading of the ordinance is it's for people that don't have right. off-street parking. Right. We have off-street parking. So I, I'm, I re-emphasize that, and I agree with it, it's, it's you know, if, if you do that, then it's going to go farther up Westchester Street or it's going to go up North Liberty or something like that. So I think a, a coherent plan is, is the better thing to do and not just issue uh, limited parking uh, tickets because uh, I'm not going to pay $50 a year when I don't need it. And uh, somebody, as Matt said, somebody will have a two-hour sticker someplace else and just park there anyway. And then he, they don't have to move at all. Thank you. And on Westchester, the, they, the trucks that park there over the winter, they know exactly when the enforcement is and when it isn't, and they start parking at, at certain dates and the same trucks are there. And as soon as the house is being done, there are five cars that park there, you know, for four months till it's done, you know, till it's done. So there's the issues that we've tried to flush out that we still need, need a lot more work. And a lot of enforcement issues, too. It's a, yeah, it's, some of it's enforcement and some of it is, is policy. I mean, if we're allowing it, if you get a sticker and you're allowed to park as long as you want, that's what they do. And so, so some of it, we have to figure it out. Like, and I remember, I'm, I've been around long enough that I remember when one of the suggestions right, was that uh, only people who didn't have off-street parking were, it would be able to get a, 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 two hour, a sticker to right. park in the two-hour yeah. zone. And that went over like a rock. You know, no one wanted to talk about it. So it's just very interesting. Um, so should we leave the public hearing open and I would suggest it? that you close the public hearing and refer it to town administration. Okay. We'll close the public hearing and refer it to town administration. So, so we'll I need a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Um, town manager? Uh, we've got one last public hearing, and it relates oh, sorry. to the Warren ar two Warren <laughs> articles Skipping that ahead. are on for the November 6th, 2017 special town meeting. And just a little background for the board. These are two citizen articles that seek to add parcels into the town sewer district. The Nantucket Sewer Act, Section 10, allows for sewer districts to be amended subject to a vote of town meeting and subject to a vote of the Nantucket Sewer Commission, which is the board. 
if the board votes to include parcels in a sewer district, then there would be a majority vote required at town meeting. And if the board were to not approve it, it would be a two-thirds vote. So what we've been doing with these requests to amend the sewer district to add in additional parcels is have a small internal group of health officer, the director of planning, and the sewer director review the parcels for uh, um, in connection with some criteria that was established some time ago and make a recommendation. So re regarding this, there's been a little bit of recent discussion about perhaps reworking that criteria. It may be somewhat outdated and we probably need to take a harder look at additional types of criteria as well as the, the, the parcels have been reviewed to date in, in a group, not individually. So one of these articles contains a series of parcels on Bartlett Farm Road. So they weren't individual, the criteria was not individually applied to each parcel, it was applied as a group. And I think it's become apparent that we probably need to modify that and actually look at them individually. So uh, um, the, the, the group can speak about the recommendation and um, then you all have some discussion. The, the finance committee is having its public hearing tomorrow, so we could let them know what your discussion was or if there's a, a vote taken about these. Either Roberto or David or both. Uh, good evening again, David Grace, who director, along with uh, Roberto, the uh, Board of Health director. Oh, and Andrew's coming up as well. Um, all three of us did meet and discuss on this, and we did go through the checklist um, numerous times with a couple of notes uh, on the, the checklist. And maybe Andrew can give a little more uh, background on the uh, Hummock Pond South area, where this is just outside of um, that zone. But the, uh, we all have a, a strong consideration that this is a, a large contributor to the nitrogen impacts for the, the pond. Um, and anything to pull a lot of those out, and we have numbers um, going back to um, specifically what the brewery does a day or, or a month. Um, and I'll let, I'll, I'll let the other guys talk as well. But um, we've, we did some pretty good research this afternoon and some discussion. So maybe Andrew has a little more history on it than what I do. So from the health department's perspective, uh, this is one of the nitrogen sensitive areas. It's uh, the um, nitrogen that comes through all the effluent that comes out of the uh, this perfect, actually the blue area that's uh, right now off of Bartlett Farm. All of this effluent contributes straight to the Hummock Pond. So it is in the Hummock Pond watershed. So from, and uh, soils here tend to be pretty nasty, uh, which requires septic systems to be larger, uh, taking up much more space on the land and making more of the land unusable. So from the health department's perspective, we believe that adding this to the sewer district is a good idea, uh, mainly because um, it will remove a lot of the n nutrients into the soil, as well as prevent when these systems fail, um, which they always, which they will eventually, um, prevent having to really tear up large swaths of land, and it becomes a real financial burden uh, for the property owners. Uh, the second article, which is the Wero Wero Lane, um, is also in a nitrogen sensitive area, um, and it is already adjacent to one of the sewer districts. So we don't see that much of an issue. This area contributes more towards the. Uh, the well, the, it's part of the wellhead protection district. Is there a difference? To, I, was, I was looking on the GIS map today. Yes. And it was right next to a needs area, mm -hmm. but it wasn't in it, right? It's so when you say nitrogen the, sensitive, it's nitro different. Yeah, nitrogen sensitive is different than the needs area, the sewer needs area. Uh, the sewer needs areas uh, are from the CWMP. Right. Uh, the nitrogen sensitive areas are more for the watersheds uh, that are causing the algal blooms that we've been seeing. Roberto, when you're talking about the effluent and the nitrogen contributions, is that coming from the septic or from the land itself? Or There's where? always a background that comes off in the land from fertilizer runoff, road runoff, things like that. Uh, 
ac uh, atmospheric deposition, but the bulk of the nitrogen and nutrients really in general that enter the groundwater come from the septic systems. So, and this may be part of what Libby was saying with Article 15 then, the most important parcels would be the ones that contain the, the market, the farm market, and the brewery itself, not necessarily all of the land. All of the parcels. Yes, exactly. The, the parcels that have active septic systems on them are the, mo the parts of biggest concern for us, um, mainly because, for example, like the, like the brewery has a rather large septic system of 4,900 gallon per day system. Uh, that's not counting the storage tanks that they have plus the portal potties that they use. So it's a high use property. Um, it's, and it is right in the watershed. So this would be four, almost 5,000 gallons a day of septic system effluent that is not entering the groundwater. Um, and that's just natural background. It's not, I'm not saying that the brewery is doing anything wrong. I'm not saying, it's just yeah. a natural yeah. septic system use. Yes. Two, the, two questions. Um, one, why would we not leave out the, un, the farmland that doesn't have any structures on it? Um, and two, it, does this change anything with occupancy at the brewery if they have sewer? Yes, actually, it would, it would change occupancy issues because right now they are definitely limited by what their septic system can handle. Same issue that we've been seeing in Millie's. Um, their septic system can only handle the 220 seats in the event space and the 120 seats in the, in the tasting rooms. Uh, and seats is in quotations because it's a calculation we use in Title V. Um, it would definitely, they would no longer be limited by that Title V number. Um, so they would be limited specifically by the use. Um, the septic system is no longer a limiting factor at that point. Um, as far as not counting the, the um, non-developed land, the past practice has always been to take the article as a whole. Um, it's a very good point that you bring up, and it's definitely something that we should discuss um, in our process, and I, I'll, leave, I'll let them answer more about that too. Okay. Thanks. I'll, I'll comment. I, I, the same thing I said last year, I think these should be done individually. Uh, you have one failed property and you put, a, you put nine others that aren't necessary to get put in and that you know, it bumps them into 10 points and they're off. You know, I don't believe necessarily in this checklist anyway, but it, you, know, you put one with water quality issues or one with whatever and you take nine that aren't and then they're all bumped to have 10 points. So I think uh, so I think that, that that part of it is uh, is faulty, you know, the way we're looking at it. We should be looking at these individually. Uh, the intent initially, and I'm here long enough, that was the needs areas had where, the, where we were focusing our efforts. It wasn't to extend sewer to the entire island because it wasn't necessary and we couldn't afford it. And, you know, I don't think a lot of that has changed. If this map right now showed the brewery and the farm building, the commercial building being included, and the rest excluded, I think I'd be on board of it, board with it right now and not saying much. But, you know, because I know that there's needs in those two properties. I'm not so sure about the need on the farmland and everywhere else. Uh, I think there's some other issues that we need to think about. A lot of this agricultural land is un that probably hasn't been discussed is I think under, what is it, 61A or something? So. You know, if we're gonna, if, that we, if it is under 61A and we increase the value, you know, then it makes it less likely that we, if it ever changed hands, that we would exercise our first refusal. So I think there's some issues here that are pretty important mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. that, you know, this careful analysis hasn't uh, addressed yet. So, you know, so, I, so I'm not so sure. I'm, I know I'm not ready to, I'm not ready to support it. And in fact, if it went like this, I would be asking the board to, you know, to sit, put two thirds and recommend against it at town meeting. You know, I think there needs to be some more work and some more analysis to do something that's in the best interest of everybody here. So that's my take on it. Andrew? Sure, can I just follow up? I yes. mean, I had similar concerns and this, I mean, in general, I support what both of my colleagues have said about the, um, health issues and, and other reasons to extend it. But one of my concerns, which I expressed to David, was there's both, uh, there's a couple properties in here 
that do not meet the master plan goals for land use here. They include RC2 land, which is a high density zone. And I think in order for that to move forward, there would need to be some additional pro possibly negotiations between the board and the applicant on exactly what the expectations are for those properties. So I, I guess that falls in line basically yeah, what, what you said. That's kind of what I'm saying, yeah. We have to figure out what's the, what's the purpose of the entire article. Right. Just yeah. lumping everything in, I think we could end up with some yeah, unintended there's, consequences. There's quite so, a so would you see, it, yeah, would you see a zoning change as part of this maybe? Uh, it could be. Yeah. Um, it could be a zoning change can't happen now. No, I know, I know, but, but I mean, but a commitment it, to a zoning change in the future, yeah, yeah. Um, and maybe an extension of the agricultural um, restriction beyond just the 61A, maybe a more permanent restriction, um, or the or those particular properties maybe not are not included. So, um, so that that may take a little more, a little yeah. more time. And, and so it's, it's, it's always more complex well, than it it's seems. It's a lot more complex. It is. And, it is. And I agree with you. This is part of my concern with yeah. the fall town meeting. Right. Is, you know, we're in the middle of the summer, and these things get slid on, yeah. and they take a lot of work. And I'm not so sure that we have the, the, the staff yeah. and our committee and even, you know, the finance committee or Andrew have time to really tackle and, you know, really dig in and understand it. And uh, next thing you know, you're at town meeting, and people, you know, vote for their friends. And you know that's fine, but you know there's ramifications of being a nice guy that we have to be careful about. So, uh, and if it, if it, I'll ask Libby if it has a ten, do we have to vote it to approve it? No. No. no okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So we have. That no. I, if you this don't, is a public hearing. Yeah. I just I'm um, just um, talked to Matt comment. and Don earlier about the timing on mm -hmm. this. FinCom is currently scheduled to adopt its motions next Tuesday for the Warren Articles. The board is scheduled to review comments, if you want to make any, on Warren Articles, I think on October 4th. There is a little bit of time between the 4th and around the 18th when the warrant needs to be sent to the printer. So FinCom might possibly take it up again or maybe one of the, th I mean, I, I think there are some very good points that have been raised here that aren't going to get resolved tonight, right. and they may or may not get no, resolved no. before um, any motions are made. But since there is a question about at least the, the one article, a anyway, perhaps the board doesn't take action, which is n uh, not really an approval, so I think it would require a two-thirds vote at town meeting, and maybe these concerns are expressed to FinCom, and yeah. they can talk about it. But you all, as the sewer commission, are the responsible right. body for some, uh, something. That makes sense to me. Sorry. I, was just, I just wanted to comment. note that um, you mentioned October 18th that we had some leeway, but we had backed that date up because the printer needed more time. So we gave them like that Monday or Tuesday, I think. Um, so th this is a public hearing. Are there any comments from the public? The did you have another you, comment, uh, David? If I could, yeah. just quickly. Go ahead, Cormac, you can yeah. start coming up. And we all Go had next. discussed all the other concerns you guys have all raising, and we understood that there's a lot more work to do on this article to go forward at all, period. And we have discussed, I've discussed with the, um, the, the people that have uh, bringing this forward, that there's going to be, they have to look downstream, not only at their property, but there's a lot of stuff downstream that we have to look at from Surfside Road all the way through to Bartlett that they would either have to be responsible for um, in order to even be able to do this. So we took and did it as a, as a group to start with. And then if we need to take and separate them by that side, I don't think is an issue that we could really, we could tackle that without much difficulty. But it's, there's a lot of downstream stuff that we have to consider before we could even approve anything going further. So just besides the district. Can your facility handle this? Yeah, as far as capacity goes, we did the numbers and um, it, it would give about 147,000 gallons uh, a day, I mean a month, um, it would contribute to the plant, um, which is really um, a, a drop in the hat compared to um, some of the older sewer areas where we could pull out 177,000 gallons a day of II if we were to take and do some other projects. So it's, it's, as far as capacity, we could handle it without a problem. Um, it also has the brew waste that we get, we take and treat on a, on a daily or every other day basis that gets pumped in um, by tanker truck now. 
that comes in extremely strong when it hits the plant, allowing that to get put into the sewer would help dilute that by the time it hits the plant. So there's, there's other things we were looking at. Um, and I would be all be just, just locating those certain parcels would not be a, an issue, I don't believe, as far as that goes. When you're looking at the capacity, David, how many, how, how many houses are you envisioning on, in this, you know, are possible on this? How many acres is That's it? something that we were still trying to figure out because it's RC2 and there's a couple other ones. I mean, right now, the, I think the 5,000 square foot lots could be if it was to go down that way. But I said this was just the initial um, going through the checklist, which I agree the checklist probably needs a, a lot of help now. Um, we did that back when the original sewer advisory committee. And um, there's a lot of people in the Gulf View and everywhere else that are still waiting for sewer if Madigan ever comes through. So this could all, we could all piece together if we can come to agreement on where we, where we want it or where we don't want it. So okay. there's a lot of work to be done, a lot still to be done. Thank you. And, and, and sort of my thought was we want it where we need to put it. And, and so, so that's the, and we want to spend our money putting it where we need to put it. Yeah. So I, I think that's. I mean, the brewery, not only do they have all the tanks and, and all the capacity, but they, they're running nine porta potties all the time out there, too, which is they're clean four or five times a, day, a week and they're pumped out to the plant. So there's a lot of stuff to consider, really, a lot more than uh, just the other. And the Wero Wero land is, is, is fine. However, they're also going to have to have some um, uh, contribute um, factors to the town as well because there's no gravity line to where their lot is. So they're going to have to bring gravity up there and then a bunch of other people are going to want to tie in so there's there's work on that one as well but it meets the it does come into the criteria so and 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 that's sort of and what you're talking about now is is kind of an interesting issue because who pays for that you know people seem to think it should all be on the tax base but some of the way to capture is betterments and that you know in fairness because you know i've got I, I know people that have had you know are being told oh you have to pay for everything and anyone could hook in well, that doesn't you know that doesn't seem like a fair policy and then you know, so so there's sort of and then it's like to what standard you know if, if we're gonna if you're picking up ten houses or a thousand houses there's a lot different sewer cost and so there's a and there are different standards and, and I'm not sure that we quite have a handle on that I think you've done good work and are getting closer but I think we need to sort of have that sorted out and we're in talks all the time now with trying to you know considering a sewer master plan or, or just and every time a development comes to us we have to strongly look, and we'll talk with Andrew and Roberto, and I mean, there's, there's developments coming in Bartlett Road everywhere that we have to, you know, Bartlett Road sewer can only handle so much. We, we just found that out on Vesper Lane. We, you know, we've increased that to a 12-inch main because of development. So we're, we're trying now to fix what is broke in a lot of ways. So. And, and sort of what should happen okay. is, like, you have, if you had a master plan and all the mains were big enough, then, you, then the stuff feeding in could be made big enough and then you could find a way to equitably pay for it with the people who are benefiting going into them and what's happened now is that in, in the incentive has been to put as small a thing as possible that allows you to get your development or your house done and then try to back charge people if you can and it really should be looked at like you're saying from the you know the, from the good of the island the entire island should be looked at and the people benefiting should be asked to pay a fair amount not an excessive amount mm -hmm. but a fair amount and I think we're not quite there yet. Yeah. And I'm a big fan okay. for not necessarily expanding everywhere, but let's, you know, we still have stuff we have to fix. So we have to look at downstream before we look at anything else further. But so it is a lot of work still to yeah. be done. Uh, let's just back. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I, I was just trying sure to take some public the, comment. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> go ahead. No, go ahead. We can close the public hearing. I, I was just going to elaborate a little bit on what David was saying and what Matt is bringing up here. We are about to be seriously working on the CMOM, which is something of a master plan. I forget what that stands for. Uh, maintenance and operations manual. What's it called again? What is it? Capacity maintenance operations, and it, it's it, it's getting underway here very shortly. We yeah. just awarded our CCTV work, so so there's, a lot. there's there's about to be some some that's that's essentially master planning for the the current system, and the making sure the pipes are sized properly and assessing their condition, and then developing a capital improvement plan to fix them. 
but the other thing that's sort of happening concurrently that's just been coming up recently in the transition between DPW to sewer is this issue of the private extensions, which have, which have been problematic. They haven't been consistently administered over the, the years, and sometimes they issues come up and we are now faced with them. So we are working to make all of that consistent and to have a consistent policy of when people want to do connections to the sewer and they're not sewered now but they're in the district, that they fund it, they design it to town standards and town specifications. And I think David's really bringing that up with some very current projects. So we, we understand what yeah. you're saying and agree with it. Okay. That's all. Thank you. Cormac. Thank you, Madam Chair. Cormac Collier, Nantucket Land Council. Um, I definitely agree with uh, many of the things that have been stated here. Um, I understand that the, um, the checklist is somewhat antiquated, so I appreciate the, um, the comments in terms of pro potentially relooking at that in the future. Um, I, I definitely agree with Andrew's comments, support his comments in terms of the concerns of the, the properties. Um, at least some of them not being in conformance with the master plan, which is really an um, essential document and planning document before we're starting to extend sewers into certain areas. Um, as, as Roberto said, but I just want to sort of define it a little bit further, really the only parcel in terms of the built-out parcel right now that's in the needs area, the Hummock Pond watershed, is Cisco Brewery. Um, Everything else um, essentially runs in a gradient to the south, to the water, to the open ocean to the south. That's not to say that the Bartlett Farm market um, isn't potentially in need of uh, septic. I mean, of sewer. I know that they have problems. I know that it is a is it is, is a commercial use, and it probably does make sense in some capacity to put sewer out there. My concerns were really towards the vacant land, the potential of. Um, of affecting that Chapter 61A status, because that's really some of the bread and butter of what we do, being environmental open space advocates, and we look to the town, if possible, to exercise that right of first refusal. If there's really a difference in that cost basis versus sewer versus septic, that will affect the town's ability to, to execute that first refusal, which can also, of note, be assigned to other parties, such as the land bank as well. Um, so. Uh, what were my final comments? My final comments were if there's a, a pr I don't really know where you're going to go, where the FinCom's going to go up to next town meeting. If you guys just say no, let's look at it in the spring, then I'll, I, then that's great, that's fine. But if you're going to look at it and just piecemeal maybe Cisco and Bartlett Farm out, um, or Bartlett Farm proper out, my question I think to you, Madam Chair, to Andrew through you, Madam Chair, would be, and to Roberto, perhaps, um, if a sewer line runs along a road, does an abutting property have rights, even though they're not in the sewer district, to tie in? Not in the sewer district. So the answer is no, they okay. don't, because any property, the only way they can tie in is to be in the sewer district. Perfect. Yep. Great. And then the second comment <clears throat> is we've been focusing so much on, um, on this Article 15, because that really is the, the most important one. 16 is um, in a needs area. It's in the Maya Comet watershed. I wish it was more of a weighted thing in terms of the checklist, because if you just looked at this one alone, it probably wouldn't get nine points. Um, so if you look at 16 and take their recommendations, maybe don't do it from a factual standpoint that it met the 10 point or nine point, but more so that it's in the Maya Comet watershed. Thank you and meets the, the master plan. And in general on this one, I mean, I think Cormac, you would agree that all those, really all those properties down to Maya Comet Road should be included. They're all really part of the needs area there. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Um, Marianne? My name is Mary Ann Hanley. I'm the proponent of Article 15, and I'd just like to speak to a couple of the comments that people have made this evening. Um, my client, Bartlett Farm, is basically, they're trying to take care of their existing needs. They have septic systems throughout the farm. They have large septic systems that are going to need to be replaced, and they'd like to be able to do, to provide their sewage disposal in the most environmentally safe manner possible, which would be to tie into the sewer system. 
Um, we have actually been in discussion with the DPW for a couple of years. We've been, approached them and we were asked not to bring this article up for the Springtown meeting because there were so many sewer articles and so many concerns. They said that it would be better just let's see how, you know, the Maya Comet and the Somerset Needs area goes and then we can come full with this on a later basis. We feel it's prudent considering our close proximity to the Hummock Pond watershed and the fairly intensive day-to-day -day use on the properties with tourists, employees and the like to tie into sewer. It just, it makes sense. Um, if you could go back to that plan, Erica, that shows the Article 15, I just wanted to point out there are actually a couple of properties on there that are highlighted in the dark blue that are not included in the article. Um, the one is the one at, uh, basically the two up that front on Hummock Pond Road. That one, yeah, that one is not, and that one that goes around the brewery proper, so to speak, is not included. Um, and as for the Bartlett Farm property, you can't see it on the plan, but there are substantial farm buildings, especially on that large lot that's south of the brewery. Um, with house, there's employee housing. There's all sorts of employee areas for septic and sewage. There's a tremendous amount of wastewater produced. Um, we're trying to make sure that we can continue to provide those same facilities and putting in septic systems in the future. We've, trust, we've got land to put them in, but the problem is the groundwater potential and the nitrogen loading. On the area that goes down Bartlett Farm Road, down towards, what is that, Heller's Way, um, there, are house, there are some facilities on that. There are some houses, um, and again, there's can I just yeah, question sure. that? Because I'm looking at the GIS. It looks like this one's vacant. That is and vacant. This large one. That's you, that's pretty much farm property. That's I'm where the U pick is. That's that. where the um, solar facility is back there. Yeah. So I mean, the question is: Is some could some of these parcels? It's certainly that something that we could consider, have but it doesn't subjects on them. It doesn't make sense to run a line down and then not be able to use it if in fact we had to move some of the housing, farm housing onto a different facility. Again, this isn't a plan to develop the area. It's a plan to be environmentally correct in what we do going forward in the future. Andrew? Matt, Madam Chair, could I ask a question? Mm -hmm. The uh, property that's on uh, the property that's running along Bartlett Farm Road right here, which is in the RC2 district that has lots of frontage um, and is currently vacant, is that, I mean, that's not part of the farm buildings and including that, this, this particular parcel the here. behind it. The ones behind it, I believe, are in LUG3, okay. but... RC2, I think, as you are well aware by now, is a zoning district we're phasing out. It's 40 feet of frontage, it's 5,000 square feet, it's a variety of commercial uses. This is one of the few RC2 clusters left, including the brewery, and we've been talking on and off for years about what will be the zoning district there uh, of the future. And I think the one thing about including that is that is a little different from where there's existing buildings and septics. That property is currently vacant. I, I understand what you're saying, but the area, it's current, it is RC2 now. It could be developed now. And because it's on town water, septic systems could be installed. So, I mean, there's a potential for developing that area and putting septic systems in, and it doesn't really make sense for anybody to put more septic systems out there. So, I mean, we're happy, you know, we can, we will talk to Andrew. Nobody has really approached us about this article since we put it in. Um, so uh, we could certainly talk to people, but the potential, if, if people are worried about the potential for development, it's there, it exists, but right now it could all de be developed and it would have to be developed with septic systems. Are there any further public comments? 
If not, I'll close the public hearing. I'll put up more board discussion. Um, I'll, go ahead. I'll just a quick comment. I, I get, and this is sort of, I get frustrated because some of the things are, are we're being shown something and it really wasn't in there. And it's, I get sort of frustrated. You know, this is sort of why I don't like the fall town meeting partly too. But, you know, so, and I, well, I agree, you know, I think the farm should be in, I think Cisco should be in, you know, and maybe the housing for the, the housing for the employees should be in, but I'm not so sure about the other ones at this point, and I'd like to know what the impact of that is. I'd like to know what the impact is, you know, from a build-out perspective. I'd like to know what the impact is from a town perspective. Uh, the town's going to be responsible to take care of these once they're put in place. I mean, there's, there's other unanswered questions, and where does this go on the priority list for the sewers? You know, or should we be doing something other than this first? So I just think, you know, I just think it's a little premature, but... So we're, we're sitting as sewer commissioners, um, and we've been given two staff reports, um, and we've understood there's a lot of questions in terms of even the accuracy of the map, I, th I believe, in terms of what's in and what's out. Is that true? There are some parcels that are not so on the list. So I, you know, I personally don't, uh, you know, I wouldn't support... Um, you know, as, as one sewer commissioner, I wouldn't support um, moving, or, you know, approving this uh, map change. Uh, and, and, and to me, it's an up or down. It's not a, well, let's try to do this or that. I mean, to me, that's, you know, that's really, our, I believe, that's why I see our, our job is to either a yes or a no. Well, in, in my in my mind, it would be not not a no forever, but a no in terms of it. We need to do some more work on this, yeah. and possibly include companion articles with zoning changes, right. um, and possibly tweak which parcels are in it. I think that I can see the potential need for some of these properties, but um, mm. I just have a with our deadlines, it's it's a little it's difficult to give it a positive recommendation. Yeah, I I would be along absolutely along the same lines. I think there's a need for the brewery and possibly the market. The FinCom's putting in their motions the on Tuesday. Of what? The deadline of what? I'm sorry. The Finance Committee is scheduled to adopt the motions next Tuesday. There is a possibility they could adopt them a little bit later. But it's going to be up to them. That's a very short period of time to talk about developing other, other articles. Um, well, yeah. I mean, it, it seems to me that it would make sense to table this till the annual. Mm -hmm. Because it's obviously sewer's not going to get run tomorrow anyway. <laughs> Did you have your comments? Yeah, first? I actually just wanted to ask Roberto just a couple clarifications, just trying to work through what you were looking at it from in the checklist. Mm -hmm. And from the Board of Health's point of view, the brewery is the biggest concern. Yes, right now, because it's the most, as far as sewers go, yeah. uh, the brewery has the largest system that contributes to the. Uh, Pomic Pond. And Bartlett's Farm, the market versus the outbuildings and the employee housing. The Board of Health's point of view, how essential is that for sewer? The the farm, not so much, mainly because, uh, like Cormac said, the the watershed is facing closer. It goes more to the ocean side. Mm -hmm. um, the only concerns that we have are immediate groundwater issues that a septic system would would uh, affect, mm -hmm. but they have town water. So, or if there was no any drinking water contamination, yeah, or if there was potentially any significant growth in the number of employees or increased volume coming from Bartlett's, that would be then it would become more of a concern, maybe. It even as far as as far as groundwater goes with the septic systems and things, the groundwater is flowing more towards the ocean than it is to the pond, and because they have town water, and even if they keep adding uh, residences to that property, they would connect to the town water anyway. So they're not creating an immediate health hazard. Right. Um, and maybe this maybe is for Andrew, just understanding, or maybe even David, mm -hmm. but just understanding when you looked at capacity in the checklist. You were fleshing out a potential theoretical zoning changes, the capacity that that would that that would result in, as opposed to the actual capacity right now today. 
<laughs> yeah, we we have, keep a running tab of all zoning changes, land bank acquisitions, anything that might have um, uh, an impact on capacity. Mm -hmm. And to date, I mean, it's there's at least 700 less units uh, than the original um, projection. Now, the CWMP was recently redone, and there's adequate capacity, and we continue to sort of monitor what changes on a unit basis are made. Okay. So um, my understanding from at least the, the past CWMP is mm -hmm. there is adequate capacity for all the areas under, their current, under the current zoning. So we keep track of what's the impact when it's changed. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. So what's the, what's the pleasure of the board? Um, and should we take them separately? I, you mean the two articles mm -hmm. separately? 15 and 16? Mm -hmm. yeah. I think so. Anyone else think so? Do you want to take 16? Sure. <laughs> Should we do something? Would you like to make a motion on 16? <laughs> yeah, well, I'll make a motion that we, uh, that we include 16. It's in the needs area. Second. Okay, all those in favor on yeah. recommending Article 16? Yes. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Um, I would suggest possibly a take no action on number 15 and then um, bring it back um, in a refined way for the annual. And that's the same as not approving it. Well, it'll still go to town meeting, but it re would require a two thirds right. vote rather than a right. majority vote for passage. And I would hope that the applicant would work with the town and um, work out some of the concerns. And that's based on the fact that they wouldn't be able to do that before a special town meeting. I don't, th I don't think there's time. Mm. There's no time to do any zoning changes for this right. town meeting. So I just asked Andrew, would you consider uh, bringing uh, zoning changes back in um, in the spring for these, I'd be happy to. I mean, the you know we have a series of again our C two eliminations. We've been right. doing that for many years. Is, is this on the list though for it our C two? Certainly is. Oh, okay, there have good. been for the, for next year. Okay, there have been other discussions prior to this article about okay. what that zoning should or no. I know. Be. I just didn't know if it was on on the die. I know this is you're doing our C two elimination over a period of time. Is that is it up to, could you do it next? Well, this is a fairly limited area, and again, I'd be happy okay. to include okay. that in the Good. list. Okay. Um, if, that was, if that was possible, I'd be happy to do that. I mean, it would have to be what, what the owner wants, too. Um, does someone want to make a motion? I'll make a motion to take no action. On Article 15. On Article mm -hmm. 15. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So that motion carries unanimously. Okay, and now we're on to the town manager's report. So we have been having some internal discussion about the 2018 Fourth of July celebration activities, the town sponsored items, and I think we believe that we need another year of not having the fireworks on the actual 4th in 2018. The 4th is on a Wednesday. So we've been talking about either the 3rd or the 5th, and it sounds like most recently um, we have thought, it turns out, we think the 5th might be better. Oh, okay. We, we said the 3rd in the packet, yeah, but then right. we talked about it again, and now, now we think maybe the 5th. Mm. And so why the 5th? Yeah, why? Chief? The fifth works better because if you have it on the third, the officers work until 11 o'clock midnight dealing with the fireworks detail, and then I have to give them an eight-hour break, so I can't start them as early on the fourth 
and we have to start early on the fourth with at least four or five of them to do the downtown um, activities that we do down on Main Street. They go down there starting at five or six in the morning till noon to cover that. And so it would give us more flexibility and more staff available if it was the downtown Main Street activities on the fourth and the fireworks on the fifth. From the perspective of our visitors, um, what what would you think? I don't I don't know the answer. What would be more appealing to them, the third or the fifth? I, I was kind of thinking the fifth might be more appealing okay. because either people will come for the whole week and it really doesn't matter which right. day they'll be on vacation anyway, um, or they might actually come down on, on the, the fourth, fourth and stay oh. through the weekend and make take two days off of work kind okay. of thing where they might work Monday and Tuesday before they come down yeah so I can tell from I can tell from our sales that the whole week is a zoo now so okay. I don't think so it really makes any okay. difference okay. All right. you know and then it quiets down okay. the weekend the week yeah. after it starts to quiet okay. down a little bit but it, it really there's no difference between the okay. third or the fifth now I just want to make sure there's from not the number some of people here it's okay yeah there's not some competing interest from a tourist standpoint, but that's that's fine. That's, I doubt it. But. Yeah. Okay. So I'm comfortable. With. Sounds good to me. You just want to take take a vote. Or so I uh, make a motion that we uh, fireworks on the third, and I'm sorry, fireworks on the fifth, and Main Street activities on the fourth. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Motion carries unanimously. So let's just make sure everybody knows. Nobody. Oh, Nobody. I'm sorry. Oh, it did not. I thought someone did. <laughs> um, so then we, um, I went to the government study committee last week, and we just talked about getting input from the whole board. They have a pretty good list. I think Melissa has been patiently waiting here to speak <laughs> on it. And John's back there, too. Riveting meeting. So happy I was here for the whole thing. So many ideas. So many ideas. So many ideas. Um, so thank you. I'm Melissa Murphy, and I'm John Brescher. We are the co-chairs of the Town Government Study Committee, um, and uh, our fellow board mem our committee members are Rick Atherton, Linda Williams, Penny Dye, Tucker Holland, and Linda Williams. Did I say Linda? Christy Williams? Christy Flaherty. Oh, or Christy, Christy Farantella. Farantella. Yes, great. So um, Linda gets it twice. Yeah, thank you. So um, Linda gets it twice. Um, so uh, uh, Florencia Rulo in the town administration office has been fantastic uh, in helping us. There is a town government study committee web page that is a part of Nantucket-MA.gov. Uh, we encourage everyone in the community to visit that page, uh, familiarize yourself with the mission of the group, and there's a great graphic on there that says have questions or input, please email um, John or myself or any committee member, but by emailing John or I, we can bring some ideas forward. Um, but most importantly, our reason for being here tonight is to get this committee's work on your radar and solicit input from members of the Board of Selectmen. Um, anyone in the community really to give us some sense of things that you would like this committee to focus on in terms of uh, ways we can uh, improve town government's process, perhaps taking some look at the charter um, and what needs to be amended or changed uh, there, um, particularly as it relates to some special bylaws and things that may have changed or updated previous um, what are they called? The previous charter uh, amendments. amendments, whatever. So you get the point. Um, it's a, our town government has changed significantly. I would even argue, arguably say over the past five years in terms of scope and capacity and what we're responsible for, our community most certainly has changed. Uh, infrastructure has changed. And so I think this committee has some great work to do to see how we can make some improvements um, as a community and as a working government. You want to add anything? Yeah, and so far we've, we've had two meetings thus far and really we've realized that we need to do quite a bit of fact finding mm -hmm. before we can really make any recommendations whatsoever. Um, we're looking at things at both micro level, just within bylaw, charter amendments, and macro level, uh, having things relating to town meetings, formation of government, etc. You know, basically every, everything's on the table and we're just excited to look at what, what information we can get at this point. 
So to that point, thank you, John, for saying that. To that point, I think the um, purpose of the next couple of meetings, the next agenda items for the next at least two meetings, will be to review what previous town government study committees have done um, and get some feedback perhaps from um, prior uh, committee members to see if there was some unfinished business that needs to be tended to. Um, certainly community ideas, member of the board's ideas, and we'll take that, all of that into account and form, a, a, I think, a more structured agenda for our work and prioritizing those goals uh, and when we will be able to bring some things forward. Clearly, we won't um, have work to bring to the town um, by this town meeting, so we envision this work um, taking some time, and when we gained that perspective, we realized we weren't in any big rush to set a huge um, agenda right away and that we were really better serving the community by taking our time and getting some good input. We're try trying to be as thoughtful as, pro as possible in all of this, not rush into anything. Um, well, one, one comment. I think that the government study appointments were for one year, so we should probably talk about Quite making right. that longer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so um, they are for one year. and Because there's a lot to study. To, that's right. We did talk about that, and um, clearly the reappointments would be in the hands of the, the new board at that point. Um, so you can like the work that we're doing and want to keep us re, uh, appoint, reappoint us, or you can or make not. some changes. <laughs> um, but uh, hopefully we'll be doing good, diligent work, and, and you'll want to keep us on for another bit. So I just um, a quick question. Um, are, do you have a set of, I guess I'd call them guiding principles that you are thinking about um, as you think about improvements and they might be, I don't know what they might be, but they might be things like uh, improve operational efficiencies. Um, we, you know, we want more government, we want less government, we want more participation. So as, as you come up with ideas, what, what's a, you know, what, what are you gonna, how will you measure whether they meet these guiding principles that you might have? We don't have them yet, and I think that's the purpose of um, this meeting here tonight okay. and um, of our sort of fact-finding, as John yeah. called it, over these next few weeks is to really make sure that we're doing the best work on behalf of the community and what the community wants to see in terms of operational efficiencies, more government, less government, change, um, and, and just how we do our government work, how we can do that better. So. The more input we have from the members of the board and the community, the better representative our priorities and those guiding principles will be yep. um, of what you all want to see. Madam Chair. Yes. A couple things. I looked on, on the website. <laughs> I think there's a link that we could put on here that goes to all the, all the old minutes and studies. I think I could... I could is that on the left, Jason? I think it's on the left, previous minutes and previous reports. Oh, is that where it is? Okay. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Yeah. I just scrolled down too far. Yeah. Uh, second thing, I, I would love to see you guys look at, I don't want to give you too specific, I'll give you some examples of kind of pulling some of the minutia off the board as, as the ta this island keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. We, not, not just special town meetings that get in our way, but all the little stuff looking at stops us from looking at all the bigger things. That's one thing I've seen for being on the board for five months, such as maybe a licensing board that's separate from here. Now, not that I'm trying to take all the power away from this board, but I know that certain times a year that comes up a lot. Some, uh, a parking commission would, mm -hmm. this whole thing on Sunset Hill would, would, would go to them, and I don't know how that fits into the charter now or later or what that looks like. Well, I think we actually, somebody brought that up at one of our meetings about how, uh, about the Board of Health, how it used to be the selectmen right. that went away, but point is that yes all of these things are on the table and we're going to look at all of them if they're appropriate mm -hmm. I think that's a really great um, suggestion um, the licensing we'll, board uh, I think I think that is a great suggestion yeah. but also looking at ways to improve taking uh, these meetings and how to um, improve your time and town administration's time and, and how they're spending time on tasks so if you have more specific ideas or suggestions about about that, please email John and I, and what we'll do is collect all these ideas and bring them to the meetings and present them as groups of ideas. And we'll likely, um, we talked about once we get all the feedback together, create some of those guiding principles as Jim talked about, and then also create some buckets of how we're gonna organize our time um, and, and get people set to work on how to study what those improvements 
Yeah. Um, this may be too, uh, I think it's very important, but it may be a technical. I, I, I would like to see the name of this board changed to select board rather than board of selectmen. Um, I don't know if you've read the paper, but um, and I think I think that's just the right thing to do. I would I would just I that's would within the purview of your group. Uh, I, I would suggest that it's actually even in the purview oh, of okay. you to okay. um, add it as an agenda item. Okay, or I'll, I'll make that motion right now. Yeah, no, too, too early. <laughs> well, I mean, not not to say that this is the reason we're doing it, but uh, the town of Wellesley um, has voted to change the name of their board, or is thinking about voting to change the name of their board from board of selectmen to Board of Select Women. What is it? Board of okay. Board of Select Women across the board. Mm -hmm. Now you really can. <laughs> but I do, um, Jim. I think that's a great suggestion. I'm not sure that we would need to wait for this okay. committee to do right. a finding on it. In fact, I, you know, it's something I had been thinking about as a citizen, putting on your radar. So, yeah. I, you know, any, I think anyone. Well, Don and I have talked about. It. I think it's a good um, idea. So. Put that on the agenda. Yeah, to yeah. Be let's considered. put it on the agenda. Thank you. I think it would be a charter change. It is a charter change. That's why I asked. So. I thought, okay. Okay. Great. And, and one more question, Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. Is there any interest for your committee to look at what really nobody wants to talk about in public of changing our town meeting to a representative or even changing mm -hmm. the just, whole? They're you know, talking about that. Yeah. yeah. There it's is on a lot list. of conversation about that, and I, I would. I, I don't. I can't predict the future, but I think we're going to spend a, a large portion of our time talking about mm -hmm. that. Um, and see if this form of government is still um, best serving the community. It, it might be, but it'd be good to look at it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I'd be interested if it's something that comes up, um, platforms for non-voting taxpayers and non-voters and ways to um, collect the positive feedback ideas, reach out more and better. See if there's ways we can do that. Excellent. Yeah, we're, we're trying to get in touch with them for this committee as well, Great. so we can get some of their input as well. Excellent. Um, we are, our meetings will be posted, um, and uh, we've been communicating them obviously with um, Libby. Um, but you know, members of the board, if you mm -hmm. want to take turns coming and attending the meetings, mm -hmm. or have one person dedicated to, to come to them, we certainly want your input um, and have you at least hear how the conversations are are going. So, but not more than two of you. Please. Yeah, one of my thoughts, just, and I've shared a couple of them, I think, already, but I think maybe the selectmen should be a five-year term with one up every year, I think. There's a, a pretty steep learning curve, uh, and by the time you've figured it out, you're trying to, you know, you're trying to appease people and run again. Uh, yeah, like planning and zoning does. I, I, that was one thought I had. I keep going back to a parking and transportation commission because it's just such a big issue. It's, you know, driver of the downtown economy but it's also you know how do you do it fairly so the na you know so the neighbors and I just think it's too big for mm -hmm. us to do three times a you know three times three or four times a year in an hour right. isn't going to get it done I think bringing like want to comment and plan in the airport you know a couple of those really under the town manager more more uh, you know more directly I mean, it, it, they have, still have boards but I think you know that some of these things have to be consistent and it's impossible to, you know, sort of negotiate with unions and do other things if one part of the, the government is just off, you know, <laughs> not following directions. Right. So I think that's another one that I've brought before. Uh, you know, I think uh, sort of so what, following up on what Jim's talking about, I think sort of better interdepartmental inter communication should be sort of one of your goals, one of the, you know, founding principles is just better communication through the departments and I think better informed decision making you know that communication and you know basing decisions on you know, pro, you know information not just being driven by you know what what the neighborhood or what that individual wants it should be what how is that in the best interest of the entire island you know that should be you know what we're working on uh, and then one of the other things is a real estate position for the town you know, if if planning remains more or less on its own, we, like we've the community, it's another communication thing. You know, maybe we need a real estate. You know, we, we we sort of do we negotiate, but sometimes we're late to the table, and you know, we get the town's getting its clock cleaned by the land bank or by other entities. You know, I think we need to have you know someone. You know, look, you know, we can't do it alone. You know, we're all too. You know, we're 
so I just think that's something I've brought up multiple yeah, times. Those are great suggestions. Those are um, great, and I think it's been mentioned to us also. At, you know, taking your comment about the human resources across the line. You know, is that how is that equitable across all of the the town departments, if you will, uh, including you know, school mm -hmm. and. Um, and it should be, it's not just across departments, across its position wise, too. Right. I mean, I think that has to be, you know, if we're ever going to get a hold on it, we have to really look, be willing to look at it yeah. more than just everyone's of one, just, you know, the yeah. same. Yeah. Um, I'd, um, you know, as we look at the island home, um, the, uh, this board is the fiduciary board for the island home, responsible for. Uh, not only the financial operations, but the quality, employees, patient satisfaction. Um, and I think that's a big task, not that we can, I, I'd like to have you think about other ways to make sure that there's a, another group out there that's uh, really closely looking at the quality of the care that's delivered there, uh, like a board of trustees of a hospital might. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying you can do that, but, uh, I think that's a opportunity yeah, for us. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so thank you for these. I will rewatch the meeting and make sure we yeah. take copious notes absolutely. on your suggestions. Um, and um, if you have any further thoughts, or anyone in the community who's watching us has further thoughts, please email John um, and or myself or any member of the committee who you know um, to bring these ideas forward. Our hope is to, I think by mid-October, really start to have our priorities defined and, and get to work. So we're not in a rush, but we're not, um, we want to we want to put a, a, a move date forward. And I am planning to attend myself their next meeting on Monday. So. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, committee reports. I have one. The CPC started their um, their application review today. We saw the first three on open space, and we will continue with a lengthy process on that. But there's some pretty exciting proposals. You have a dollar number of requests. Or is um, it was around a little over four million, but last year it was set over seven. Wow. Oh, so it's. Huh. So the request the requests are yeah. lower, but we yeah. don't we don't have the. Do, the exact dollar amount okay. Um, okay. that we will be able to give out. Yeah. It will be lower than that. Right. Okay. I have a report from the Affordable Housing Trust Fund. Um, we had a meeting yesterday and we voted to increase the threshold for the down payment assistance to 150% AMI. Um, we changed it to 100% AMI at last month's meeting and this month based on the need, people who've been coming forward um, and also to keep uh, have it in keeping with a covenant program, we've, we've bumped it up to 150%. And we have a total of 20 applications approved now, as of yesterday. Um, we also approved $150,000 funding towards um, Habitat Humanity for Humanities project on weight. So they've been doing about one house a year at about $300,000 per house, but they um, are taking on this project. They're going to build two on the one lot they think they can do it for 500000 and they were looking for the shortfall, and I believe that will be coming to the Board of Selectmen for approval. So. Okay. So how does the down payment assistance work? That, that doesn't come here for approval. No. Um, the down payment assistance, up until the vote for 150%, was coming out of CPC funds. So there was $400,000. There is $400,000, which can be allocated to down payment assistance program for people in the 80 to 100% AMI. The um, the hundred fifty percent is coming out of the there's five hundred thousand that was approved at town meeting um, and that as long as it's under a hundred thousand dollars doesn't need to come back for approval and I believe because it's in fifteen thousand dollar allotments um, it doesn't come for approval to here. This is all also being um. uh, it's all being checked with council and Tucker Holland is making sure all of that but that was we decided to approve and then it'll be cross-referenced with everyone that needs to make sure that it's okay um, um, one of the questions I had when I was on the trust fund was um, how people become aware of the ability of the 
of the opportunity for the um, mm -hmm. closing cost, and I didn't know at the time there wasn't an ads in the paper or and have you done are you starting to do that yeah oh, good. right now the avenue so for the past month when it was bumped to 100 yeah. percent um it was mostly through uh the banks and and cuspa housing nantucket okay. but with the program being revised again there's going to be ads in the paper oh, good great that's yeah. awesome and don did you have concerns um well <laughs> I'd like I'd like to see this board see a presentation mm -hmm. on um, on how this works and what the parameters are, because I feel like the aggregate is over the dollar amount, yeah, I think it should and yeah. I, I think that it should have been yeah. blessed by this board before money started going out. Um, it concerns well, it me that it aggregate. seems like yeah. it's going out in little increments that will eat away a very large portion of it. So and I felt I think that the money was appropriated with the idea um, of just just having checks and balances to make sure that the greatest good is being done with that funding. And so because it's not unlimited. Right. Exactly. And so what you're saying is that for that gap, the hundred to hundred fifty percent AMI, when down when one is approved at say 15,000. Most of them so far have been in the range of seven to 8,000. But if 20 have been approved, uh, but it's way over the threshold. But it's not 20, so bar two, um, so 18 of them are coming out of the CPC funds that are seven to 8,000 that are approved for 80 to 100% AMI. Okay. So the 150% is, and that was exactly the conversation that was had, was trying to adapt the program to the needs that are, are coming out of the program now, um, but also realizing that um, it's limited funds and we, don't, we want to make sure that the people who need it most get it, mm -hmm. um, but that there would need to be further discussion about how much would be allocated to that 100 to 150%, and coming back where those funds would come from and coming back to the board with anything that needs to come back to the board for that. But it, it was a hundred, a okay. hundred thousand in aggregate was what the collar yes. that this board put around yeah. it for mm -hmm. by program. So mm -hmm. if the pro, it's not, it's not just fifteen thousand. It's you know it's the program. It's the, the so aggregate. It, it needs it. to come. I think. Yeah. I sort of just I um. <laughs> I mean, part. Of, I, I think that it's a great program, and I th think, I mean, there's so many needs on the island. I just, I want to see more affordable housing created <laughs> um, and to make some strides towards that with the funding that we're And that's something that has forth. come up as well is that, although it's been great to um, be able to help each individual with these down, um, down payment or closing cost assistance that there needs to be, again, a bigger picture look at how can we have more impact with bigger projects that are actually creating housing as opposed to just these individuals. That, that's good. And, and, what's, and what is, what, are, are there ways to do it that don't always require right. handouts? Right. Right. Are there other ways to impact it? it? Look, a lot of times I think it's, it's easy to, to, to say, you know, hand out money. Mm -hmm. It's hard to figure out how to do, put incentives in place so that we get more affordable housing, mm -hmm. et cetera. It's hard to take on some sort of tougher issues. And I think, you know, part of, I think, the goal should be how do we get the biggest bang for our buck? And, you know, I, I just, you know, so anyway, I, I just, I feel like there should be an overarching what is, what is your, you know, sort of what is your plan to tackle it other than just, you know, handing out money. Yeah. And, and you know, it's, it's not unlimited. Absolutely. And I think that, obviously, any suggestions that anyone has would be much welcome. Um, but, again, there's a focus on, on the bigger picture. Um, and exactly like you said, yeah. the best bang for buck. And as well as, you know, hand in hand with the need that's there. I think bumping up to 150%, again, was adapting the program to the demand that's there. And again, in keeping with the Covenant program, which is at 150%. Putting a little bit of perspective on it, um, Provincetown just had a home rule petition to raise theirs to 200% AMI. So, you know, and many people compare us sort of economically and in terms of the affordable housing to Provincetown. So that's something that we're aware of that we're not considering at the moment. It's more just consistency and the actual need that's there, but realizing that there is a need to look at the bigger picture. And, and, and what are the other, what are other options. programs, are there other options? What are other things that we could influence that could help do this? I mean, I think that should be a lot of the discussion as well. So, yeah, it, there were a number of items in that housing production plan that were non-financial. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, 
I mean, and like I thought the co-op was a really interesting concept and it seems like the proponents of it have gone away, but it actually might be an easier type of thing to conceptualize when there aren't individuals mm-hmm. driving it um, to think about mm-hmm. how to structure it properly. Yeah. Um, so I just... Yeah, I'd I love think to see us create creating more more housing. Permanently affordable housing that won't go away. And I know that the money is limited, mm-hmm. and we're hoping to get another funding source. I don't have any committee reports. So I have a couple shout-outs. Uh, I took a tour of the intermediate school yesterday or two days ago. I'd never re- even walked in the parking lot before, and I was really impressed. So I just want to say... Thank you to everyone from all the parents and neighbors who got involved and the, the school leadership. It was really, it was, it was really nice, really impressive. My second one goes to again, just like last week, DPW and Sewer for their storm prep. I saw, I've been downtown for seven years and I've never seen that much storm prep for drains, drains being clean, drains being prep, things I don't even know. So I just wanted to say that it was noticed. It was a nice job to Sewer and DPW. I'm done with my shout out. <laughs> Can I give one little quick thing? Yeah. There was a capital program committee meeting today, and you all have a joint meeting with Capcom, FinCom, and you next Thursday at 4. Mm-hmm. And there was some discussion today, I had to leave a little bit early, about you know everybody getting on the same page with the review of upcoming capital projects for the next fiscal year so that's all coming and um, I probably should have had this on as an announcement earlier but the finance committee does have its public hearing tomorrow afternoon at four o'clock for the public on the warrant articles for the special town meeting here uh, I think it's um, in the training room actually I'll be here anybody else or I'll be there for the FinCom meeting great Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, all this stuff needs to be signed. It's sort of messy because some.